We are live here in the uh, quarantine zone. We are uh, in week 150 of uh, the, the pandemic. And uh, today's workout, we're going to focus on a, a nice strength building hurricane. So a hurricane is a brief and powerful storm. The workout is going to be uh, aggressive, fast, and powerful to create that uh, metabolic response and super compensation so that you re rebuild stronger than you were before. And uh, the story for today, uh, so to, for the workout, just to clarify, all you need is one dumbbell or a kettlebell, uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna play with a lot of swings today. But the story for today is about kindness, and it's about uh, two college students in 1892. They're, uh, they're, they're students at Harvard, and they want to have a, uh, a piano recital. So they hire a very famous pianist named uh, Padirsky. And he, they, they hire him for $2,000. And they're going to pay him in ticket sales. And so they start to sell tickets for this piano recital uh, for, their, uh, for, their, for Harvard. And a couple weeks, a couple months go by. And he comes and he does the concert. But they didn't sell enough tickets. So they only earned about $1,600, which again is a lot of money at that time. Uh, but they wrote him a check for the $400 that they didn't earn with the ticket sales. And the, the two students said, hey, we're really sorry. We, didn't, we weren't able to do what we promised. But uh, uh, here is the, your money, and then here is the, the uh, $400. And, and you can't cash the check now, but you can cash it in the future. But we promise we'll, we'll come through for you. And uh, the, the pianist was uh, uh, adamant. He said, you know what, that's not going to work for me. Why don't you keep your money and then subtract the expenses that you, you had to pay to put on the show and then um, and, and keep the rest for yourself. So I, think it's, I think it's important. And so the, the students were just so relieved that they, uh, they, uh, they, they, they felt completely uh, indebted to uh, the, this pianist. And then he goes back to Poland where he's from. And um, a few years later, more than a few years later, World War II breaks out, or World War I, sorry. And uh, Podierski is now the prime minister of Poland. And he, uh, there's, there's a famine in this country, uh, not to mention uh, a war going on. And he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know who to turn to. So he goes to the US, uh, 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 US Department of Agriculture, Food and Aid uh, Department, and he calls and he asks for food uh, for, for his people in Poland. And the, uh, uh, the director of that department at the time is Herbert Hoover. And uh, uh, Herbert Hoover immediately uh, fulfills his request and um, obviously uh, you know, carries Poland through uh, a very difficult time. And the prime minister travels to the US to, to thank uh, to thank the U.S. for helping them, for or helping them out in their time of need, and to figure out like what the repayment structure is, or you know how much how much money they're going to have to pay off over time. And uh, Herbert Hoover's like, actually, I feel like we're square because 20 years ago I was a college student who couldn't afford to pay you for the, your your piano recital, and you went ahead and and you uh, uh, you waive waive my debt, so I'm going to do the same for you. The moral of the story, always, kindness always pays. It may not pay off in the moment. It may not be in the immediate future. But the goodwill that you create with your actions, it, uh, it, it benefits you. It benefits more than you. And we're going to continue to lead with kindness here at Training for Warriors uh, for, for the duration. So we're going to get through this. Right now, we're going to do a hurricane. We're going to start with... Uh, some kneeling stretches. I'm on the ground. And so I'm here. I'm going to do some lat stretches. We're going to do them a little bit differently. I'm going to walk out and really stretch both of my arms forward. And then I'm going to walk to the side. I'm going to crawl my hands out to the side. And you can start to feel that lat get tight on the, in my case, my right side. So we're going to be here. And then you're just going to try and keep walking that right hand closer and closer. Don't forget to breathe. 
it's breathing month. We want to breathe not just in breathing month, but we want to breathe in the workouts too. Take a couple of breaths here. Keep crawling. Crawling those hands together. I can touch my thumbs. Pretty impressive. Now we're going to go to the other side. I'm going to crawl all the way out. I'm reaching out. And then once you find that tension point, you're just going to inch along it. Breathing. Breathing. Whew. So we've got those lats stretching right now. Whew. One more breath. Excellent. Now, loosen up that in those neck and shoulders. We're going to do a little bit more with this. I'm going to take my thumbs, push them outward, punch my knuckles down towards the ground, and then I'm going to draw circles with my neck. I'm not in a hurry. Still reaching towards the ground. Glutes on, rib cage down. We're going to go five circles clockwise. Five circles counterclockwise. If you're feeling good, you can get bigger and bigger circles. Bigger and bigger. Now, I'm going to take my thumbs and I'm going to press them underneath the rib cage into my belly. And this is going to, we're going to train a breathing technique that we, we should be using for all of our squats, deadlifts, all of our powerful exercises. But I'm going to push my thumbs into my obliques, then I'm going to push my belly out into my thumbs. So I'm applying force outwards. So I'm pushing out against myself. And I'm going to push, I'm going to inhale deeply while I do it. And I'm going to exhale deeply while I do it. So you're training yourself to push outwards with your abs, not just when you're breathing in, but when you're breathing out as well. So we're at a, you're just breathing at a normal pace, continually that, that 360 degree to pressure out. And if that's easy for you, take your thumbs and push them into your low back, push them in from the side of the hips underneath your, in between your ribs and your hip bones, push, tuck your thumbs in there, and then try to push your low back out. So try to get that Pilates style breath, that real stable breathing into your thumbs. A few breaths here. It's challenging. Now that's where I want your breath to be later on when we're doing swings. I want your breath to be pressing outwards while you're inhaling and you're exhaling. But we could practice that while we're doing the bird dog. So I'm, I'm on all fours. Now I'm going to continue that same breath pattern. And I'm going to press out as I extend my leg back behind me. And I'm going to reach forward, focusing on that breath. Notice my foot's not going super far. It's not going up into the air. I'm getting long. So I'm really working on that extension and having a flat spine, not a highly extended low back. Pressing out with that gut, just like we were working on a second ago. It's a challenge. Notice I'm going slow. I'm not rushing through this. Good. One more each side. Ha. All right. We're going to open up our chest with a little pec stretch. And we're going to get the blood pumping. So right now I'm grabbing the floor, kicking my foot over the back side of my body, planting my left foot on the ground. And my right foot is, my right hand is on the floor. We're just going to take four big breaths here. Stretching that bicep, that chest. Switching sides. Breathe. 
breathing. Letting that hip open up. All right. Now, we're gonna warm up our, uh, our legs and our upper body. So we're gonna do a little bit of everything today. We're gonna do upper and lower strength. So I'm in a double wide position, lunging out, grabbing my hands, putting them inside the heel of my lead foot. I'm gonna walk out. I'm gonna walk all the way back in, reaching up, coming back out. Letting our arms warm up. Chris, you can do this one-handed, right? So what you would do if you can't touch the ground, then you could just come down and reach, come down and reach. So you don't have to do the walk out on your hands. But for those of us who are feeling like we can still do it, we go back and forth with those, that, that groin open up. Or, whoo, whoo. All right. Now, we're gonna warm up our hinge. So, we practiced that breathing earlier in our warm up, and I want you to practice that again when you go through it with your, with your uh, hinge pattern. So, still pressing out on the belly. I'm gonna reach my butt back. My foot is an is a analog of my hand. I'm gonna have pressure on the heel, the ball of the big toe, the ball of the pinky toe the whole time. So I'm going to keep that pressure evenly throughout my foot as I reach my butt back and touch that, uh, touch that kettlebell behind me. Still pressing my belly out, squeezing my glutes to stand up, using that whole foot. So my kettlebell is behind me, but I'm gonna do 10 reps here. Squeezing my butt, driving forward. The reason why we use our whole foot and not just one part of it, is the hand and the foot have me mechanoreceptors, these sensors. And these sensors tell you, tell your body how much muscle to use. Now I'm standing on top of my weight. Again, whole foot's on the ground. 10 reps, driving my hips forward. Really driving the glutes into extension, locking out the hips at the top. I feel this in my butt cheeks and my hamstrings. So when, you were at a, when you're at a party or even at your house right now and you grip a glass of wine, you have a, soft, uh, you have a soft grip. I call it the wine glass grip. If you bump that hand, it floats around. So it's not very tight or stable, but it keeps you from spilling any liquid. Well, if you grip a, uh, if you grip a tire iron, when you squeeze that tire iron, it locks that shoulder, welds that shoulder into your rib cage so that you can put the energy of your whole body behind that uh, cracking off a, a lug for your wheel. The point is, because you're using your whole hand, your whole shoulder complex engages for that tire iron grip, whereas when you have that mobile grip like a wine glass, you're very loose, it's very mobile. We want a stable, we want a stable grip with our feet so that our, all, we use our whole hip complex, all of our leg muscles. So we're gonna be grounded into that whole foot back to that tripod that I was just talking about. Now I'm doing a deadlift, using my whole foot, driving my hip forward, locking out those glutes, cracking that walnut, back is flat, still focusing on my breath, pushing out to a 360 degree you know, barrel. 10 reps there. So you've got, your, you've got your reps in, you've got your hinges warmed up. Good work. All right, Brenda, I can't see your hinging, so you better get a different angle for me so I can evaluate you. Now we're gonna swing to pull it all together. I'm gonna stand behind the kettlebell. Butt back, chest up, drop down, pitch, explode, explode. Explode. I'm letting the kettlebell pull me over, firing through with my glutes. 
everything's on, including the belly, like we've been talking about, breathing. 10 reps. Keeping it tight. Okay. <clears throat> so, now that our hips are warmed up, a hurricane is going to be a series of swings. And uh, you're going to do as many as you need to do. I have a heavier kettlebell. I won't do more than 10. If you have a lighter kettlebell, go ahead and give me 20. We're going to combine that with a T-spine push-up. So the T-spine push-up from the floor, I'm going to be down on the ground. And I'm going to do a perfect push-up, but my feet are going to be apart. So I'm going to pull myself down, come up, come up to the sky, follow the hand with my eyes, come down. Go ahead and give me two reps per side so I can see that you got the technique down. We'll get that pattern warmed up. Just making sure that we're all on the same page. Nice. All right, Reba, make sure those hips stay low when you come up. That way you're, you're in a straight line when you rotate. Then we're going to do a knee grab and reach. So a knee grab, as always, total body exercise, throwing the hands forward, grabbing the shins. The reach part is where you straight, go straight up. So I'm going to reach up. It's one. Two, shoulder blades touch the ground. Doing that every time. Give me five reps real quick just to make sure you got it. All right. Chris, you don't do planks. So what you're going to do, you're going to give me a Y. So you're still working that upper back while we're going through this, OK? Now. Your, uh, this is a high intensity interval training. So it's, we're supposed to spike the heart rate, then let it drop. So we're going to go through each of these three exercises quickly. We're not going to rest a lot. I'm going to rest a little bit in between each circuit. We're going to go three times through. And we're going to get fired up. All right, warriors. Hurricane begins now. Three, two, one, go. Butt back, chest up. Explode through. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fast, powerful storm. One. Oh, whoops. <laughs> 10 T-spine push-ups, five per side, just so we know what we're doing. Forgot to say what we're doing. Four. Four. Five. Five. So 10 T-spine push-ups, 10 knee grabs and reaches. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha. Good work. Reach up over your head, Brenda. Don't forget that. All right. So you can go right into set two. I'm going to take a 20 second break, take a swig of water. All right, keep that belly on when you're doing those swings. We want to make sure that we're pushing out and exhaling forcefully on the way up, keeping everything training. And I'm off. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven. Great work. 
One. Remember, 10 T-spine push-ups. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. Knee grab and reach. Give me those push-ups, that T-spine rotation. Knee grab and reach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So, we got this party started. We got one more round left in this first circuit. Shout out to Stila, co-captain of one of our, uh, one of our top four teams for the quarantine challenge. So good job on Stila for keeping everybody motivated and fired up. Just like me for my last set. First set. And I'm off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Okay. When you're doing the T-spine plank, or a push-up, sorry. If you're too fatigued to do push-ups uh, from, a, from a spot, you can always just do the plank. But the big thing is following the hand with the eyes. So you're getting the most out of every rep. We want to engage that upper back. So you're gonna rotate that thoracic spine, moving that head with you. That's two, three, Three, four, four, five, five. Knee grab and reach. One, two, three, four, five. Six, oh yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha, ha, ha. All right, everybody's wrapping up their first round. Perfect. I want to give a shout out to A.A. Ron. Another tactical leader here at Training for Warriors. <clears throat> All right. Now, we're going to do our second set. We're going to continue to do swings. If, you're, if you've got a heavy kettlebell, 8 to 10. If you've got a lighter kettlebell, let me see that 15 to 20. We're going to do the single arm row. So I'm in the hinge position. And I'm going to do eight reps per side. My butt's going to be back. I'm going to grip my weight. I'm going to pull up. Just getting that upper arm in line with my rib cage. So I'm not trying to spin, not trying to rotate too much. Just give yourself a couple of reps to make sure that you got it. Nice, Reba, exactly. Yes, the hinge queen. We're going to, we're going to be calling you the queen of the hinge soon. Then we're gonna do a sit out, which is Heather's favorite exercise right now. So the, uh, so, uh, the sit out, we're gonna go six per side for a total of 12. And we're gonna do a tripod. So we're gonna kick into that tabletop position. So I'm here pivoting to the outside foot, sitting out, driving the hips up, 
Coming back through, plant, kick out, up, back through, plant. Yes. So we're gonna do six per side for a total of 12 on that one. All right, and Chris, if you're wondering what to do, you're gonna do the supine bicycle, okay? So you're not using your hands or your arms. You're just gonna do 20 reps of the supine bicycle instead of that tripod. Okay, so we've got our, our plan. We're going into our second round. Let me see that explosive power. Three, two, one, go. All right, nice Heather, great swings. Loving it. Reba, looking good. All right, Reba, make sure that kettlebell can pull you over. So you wanna make sure, yeah, you get that deep hinge. Good work, warriors. All right, from there, you're gonna go into the row, single arm row. Yes, butt back, Heather, lean forward more. There you go, nice and deep, hamstrings on, yes. Eight reps per side. And then from there, the tripod sit out. So you're going to plant your hands, knees close together. Six on each side. So I'm here. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three, four, four, five, five, six, six, okay, one round down. We're good, lining up for that second round. When the heart rate come down just a little, but not too much. I like 30 seconds, you rest as you need to. Shout out to Lara. Lara, crushing that running game. Getting those strides in. So many steps. How many steps? Too many steps. So many. Keep that mileage up, Lara. All right, second round. One, two, breathing out every time. Three, four, spit that air out. Six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha. I'm gonna row again. About eight reps. If you have a heavy weight, maybe a couple less. A light weight, maybe a couple more. Butt back, chest up. And from there, the tripod sit out. Six per side. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five, five, six, six. Oh, wow. Ha! Halusa! Halusa! When you when you need help from the fins, practice that finish saying, "I got this." If, anyone, if anyone's gonna do it, it's me. All right, coming up on set three. 
as that heart rate comes down, making it happen. I'm taking that short 30 second break, then I'm gonna get back after it. Just like Joe Brookins, getting back after it. Getting those workouts in, posting them to the group. All right, I'm up. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! Rowing. I got a heavy device here, so I'm only going to do a few reps. Get as many good ones as in as you can. Letting that elbow drift towards the hip, using that lower lat to help you. Tripod sit out. Six per side, total of 12. One, two, three, four, four, five. Almost down. Six. Six. Ha. Nice work. As you can see, the stress builds in this game. It builds. We're using that to our advantage. Training effect. Getting that training effect. All right, for our third and final circuit, we're gonna be doing swings. Then we're gonna be doing the push press. So, you have your weight, kettlebell, dumbbell, you're gonna have it in your hands, and you're gonna explode through the, the hip, the power position, which is quarter squat, knees out, I'm gonna pop my hips forward, and hop up. And that's how I'm gonna support this weight, five, two, three, four, five, getting overhead. So using my butt to help drive overhead. Now, if you've got a heavy weight, make sure you're careful with it, okay? But it's all in your legs, right? We're not trying to overpower this with the shoulders. Then the military crunch. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have an object in my hands. If you have a weight light enough, you're gonna hold it here and you're going to crunch up, holding that object. We'll see if I can do it with my weight. Yeah, one, ha. Well, I could probably come up with something a little bit more reasonable than that, but that's the military crunch. So you've got your push press, your swings, or sorry, your swings, then your push press, then your military crunch. All in a row for our final circuit. All right, warriors, we're getting started in three, two, one, hit it. Yeah, yeah. Loving it. Nice work, everybody. Push press. Eight reps over your head. You're here. Driving up, rib cage down. Exploding through. Nice. Good quarter squat, Reba. Okay, Brenda, good job. Moving into the military crunch, you're keeping that weight up above your chest and pushing it up above, uh, yeah, front of you into the ceiling. 
All right, everybody's looking sharp. That's good. Okay. When you're done with your first round, take a break, grab some water. Okay, 30 second break. Then you're gonna come up to the uh, second set of the circuit. Ted swings, eight push press, 10 military crunch. Three, two, one, go. Remember, you could be tired, but you just can't act tired. Every rep counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Push press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Military crunch. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten. Shoulder burner. Okay, we're getting ready for our third round. Shout out to Catlin. I think everybody knows Catlin at this point. She's the uh, US spokes spokeswoman for Hello Kitty. She does a lot of uh, public service work, a lot of public relations. She's also helping us out as one of the co-captains for the Kimmies. Thank you, Catlin, for doing a good job. Last set. Best set. All right, finish strong, Warriors. Best set indeed. Push press, eight reps, hitching those legs, exploding through, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yes, military crunch, 10 reps, bring it on home. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What the heck? That was fast, furious. Good work. It's almost time for dessert. So make sure you got a place on the floor to do your Cossack lunges. You got your archers. The Cossack stretch for lunge to Cossack. 
I'm stepping out. Double, double width here. Drop in. I'm trying to get my hamstring to touch my calf. My chest wants to stay as tall as I can get. Nice and vertical. Right? So I'm going to alternate from the left to the right. Practice that deep drop. And the reason why I turn my foot over when I do this is to allow that hip to open up more on that trail leg. Allow that groin to open up more. Stretching that hamstring, that glute. It only works though if you drop that butt down. Finally found something that's tight on Bootsy. Having a good time stretching that groin. Whew. All right, ouch. Loving that. 10 per side. When you're done, the archer. So feet apart, you're up high in the high plank, alternating sides. Just like you're just doing that thoracic spine part of the T-spine push-up, 10 per side. If you're like Chris, you got a bit of an injury today, you could do a lying archer just like this. Inhale, exhale, 10 reps per side. Inhale, exhale. Still working that. Still work in that same spot. 10 reps on either side of the archer. Then you're gonna to go to the 10 point hip mobility, sorry, four point hip mobility for 10 reps. I'm uh, on my hands and knees. Knees are close to the wrists. Knees are up off the ground. One, one, two, two, three, three. Try not to move my hips. Four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Give yourself a round of applause for getting through that, that training, getting from that training. The story of the day was about Two college kids who uh, received some kindness from somebody and through very unlikely circumstances were able to repay that kindness uh, at a much later date. And the, um, what I would say is I like the story, but it's also, I, I think it's also important to note that giving without the idea that you're going to be paid back uh, in, in, in kind, I think that... Uh, that's the spirit of the story because Podirsky had no idea or didn't believe that these kids could ever do anything for him. And it turned out he was wrong. But uh, the, at the end of the day, that's the value of next in Liba, which is brotherly love or compassion here at Training for Warriors. And we're leading with that one hard right now as um, a lot of people are scared. A lot of people aren't in a great place uh, mentally, physically, financially. And uh, it's, it's just time to continue that outpour of compassion into yourself and into everybody around you so that you can continue to bring forth the warrior within.